Thanks for coming to the in service. I have Mr. Sacconi Prince, who spoke at our last graduation. He's going to come and speak to us about teaching in the visual age. I'm very excited to have him come. And, uh, you know, let's give him a hand. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Uh, I want to say good evening to everybody, and I'm grateful to be here for another opportunity to uh, share with you at least some of my business experience. Uh, first, I want to show a quick video, and then I'm going to explain what you just saw. Well, I guess also I guess I need to tell you something about your presenter. My name is Sacconi Prince. I'm a native Mobilian. Uh, I have a company called 3D Solution Providers, and we do 3D animation and illustration. Um, and the, over the course of the presentation tonight, I'm going to talk about several different tools that are available to assist in teaching. But first, in fact, let me show you this video effect that we did for a client. That's quick, though. Now, you just saw a video presentation, but what did you see? There was no narrative and there was no setup. The point I'm trying to make is that visual aids are just that. They are visual aids. If there's no um, groundwork laid, then it's it doesn't really have an impactful um, position on your students. What I showed you was a video that was done using a software called 3D Studio Max. 
and I'll actually get to that later. Uh, and that's really on the high end of what is available or what is actually on the market that to be used for visual aids as far as teaching. Right. Like one of the most common software packages that's available is Microsoft PowerPoint, which is actually what I'm using like tonight for this particular presentation. Uh, one that's a little more robust than PowerPoint is a product called Carbon. Uh, and actually, I'll have the websites available for those as well. Carbon is more of a web-based product, which is used for distance learning. And then uh, finally, I chose 3D Studio Max, which, quite frankly, is, is a high-end 3D animation and video production tool. With Microsoft PowerPoint, this particular software package is used to, of course, make presentations. But it's, the, it's how they are crafted. It's how they are put together, which actually makes the difference. Using PowerPoint for your subject matter allows you an opportunity to help your students work through a process. Of course, you can have a certain number of slides, but even with that, you want to limit the amount of slides that you use because you don't want to have what they call death by slides. Uh, in a teaching environment, it's always good to have interaction with your students. Uh, you can't allow your visual aids to take the wheel. You have to be the one driving the course. And I even found out that even in today's society with the technology that's available, there are opportunities that the students may know about that you're not aware of. And so taking time to talk to your students, find out not only what's available, but how they learn. I found that to be a, a, an excellent way to communicate, especially when you are trying to if I communicate technical uh, things. In fact, for instance, the video that you saw at first, it was of a proposed sports complex. The location was the old Blunt High School in Pritchett, Alabama. And at the time, in fact, when I did the presentation, the old building was still standing. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to show what they were proposing, what they had envisioned for the property once the old building was torn down. So they actually talked to me and they told me that several buildings were going to stay and in fact they were going to <coughs> tear down the other buildings and build a sports complex, which had a track, a couple of softball fields, a football field, and even a new gymnasium. But just having watched that presentation, you know, without knowing the sort of background, you would have no idea what you're looking at. And, and I guess the point I'm trying to make is that in order for visual aids to be effective, in fact, they have to do something done on, on the front end to help the students know what they're looking at or what they're seeing. And Microsoft PowerPoint is definitely one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that. It's really one of the like, universal softwares that's used for communication in classrooms and also in corporate environments. The next software in fact, that I mentioned is one called Carbon. Now, Carbon is a web-based uh, interactive software which allows you to create flash-based presentations. A lot of them are actually done using mouse clicks. So it can actually do like screen capture and actually go from where your mouse starts to where it stops to click. So you can actually walk a student through a process via carbon. And it's also useful if you have students that are, as I said, at a distance. It definitely helps them in that respect. Of course, the last one I mentioned was 3D Studio Max. Now, 3D Studio Max is about a twenty, uh, actually, uh, twenty-three hundred dollar software package. So, I mean, in fact, this is definitely on the high end as far as packages that are available to help in visual aids. But, in fact, believe me, if you are interested in purchasing this, this is going to be like a shotgun trying to take out a net. I mean. 3D Studio Max have been used in movies, video games, commercials. I mean, high end stuff. Uh, but I really didn't know where everybody was, so I wanted to at least cover the broad spectrum of what's available out there. I, I did. 
Are there any questions so far? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I also wanted to include in this some teaching tips. You know, me being a visual person, people explain stuff to me, or when I hear words, I see pictures. I mean, you know, for me, it's easy to follow uh, things that are presented. But first of all, focusing on what, what are you teaching? You know, I'm sure that all of you are in here are experts in your field. But you have to understand that your students, the main goal is to get what you know over to them. Knowing in fact, what you're teaching is critical in that process because knowing what you're teaching is as important as knowing who you're teaching, in fact, which is my second tip. Understanding your students, knowing that they come from different backgrounds, different, different economic status, different uh, cultures, all of that should go into your teaching process. And the visual age should actually be tailored around those facts. Um, and the third thing is, how are you teaching? Um, oftentimes, in fact, when you have a classroom full of students, it's understanding how your students learn. I mean, that has changed uh, quite, quite uh, like recently with the advent of the, of the iPads and you know, all of our smartphones and our smart devices. There are, there are apps for almost everything. And even YouTube. Um, actually, I ran into a friend of mine, in fact, the other day in, in the store, and he mentioned to me that he was going to school for an electronic engineer, but he had a hard time with math. I said, well, all you have to do is go on YouTube, and you can Google anything. We have a 2004 Toyota Sequoia, and our back latch broke. And I wanted to just lift the latch so I could actually take my tire down to rotate my tires. Well, I didn't know how to open it. I got on the internet, went to YouTube, and I started typing in Toyota Sequoia, and immediately in the search box, it said broken latch. And there were six videos there that actually walked you through how to replace this manufacturer's defect. But I was just amazed that those sort of resources were available. And so incorporating videos off of YouTube or even <laughs> creating Microsoft PowerPoints helped you in that teaching process. Um, I did want to talk about this. I know this is... Uh, I guess maybe somewhat, it's really not out of place in this presentation, but I really wanted to drive home the point about the passion. And the students need to know that you want them to learn. In fact, they need to leave your class with a sense of this person is really concerned about whether or not I get the material. I mean, I don't care how well crafted your presentation is or your, or your teaching ability. If your students don't pick up on the fact that this person wants me to succeed, they're not going to absorb the information. I was in college, and uh, I had a teacher. His name was Michael Rodriguez. And I used to wonder why my classmates, or at least the ones that were ahead of me, they called him Rodzilla. I thought that was the interesting name for a teacher, Rodzilla. And I, and I asked one of them, they said, why is it that you call him Rod Zill? They said, because he literally tears up your GPA. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way <coughs> Professor Rod taught us, he taught us as if we were already engineers. I have a bachelor's degree in electronic engineering, engineering and because of Michael Rodriguez, I had to change my thinking. He taught us as if we were already engineers. But, but one of the things that I walked away from, from that schooling with is knowing that Mr. Rock cared about me. He, he wanted to make sure that I learned and I knew the information. His passion showed. And that's one of the things I want to just reinforce how important it is for uh, you as teachers and as instructors. Uh, in fact, that should be the case. Now, I know that I have the questions slide up, but I really didn't know how in-depth, in fact, you wanted to go, I really didn't know if you wanted some, some sort of, you know, illustrations, I, I really didn't know if I would have access to be able to, um, in fact, connect online and actually walk you through some of the, I do, however, have 
through the serial max loader on, on my machine. So if anyone is interested in seeing how that program works, I'd be more than happy to show you. And of course, I also have PowerPoint available as well. Uh, Carbon, I didn't purchase that uh, because I quite frankly don't, don't use that as often. Uh, because my clients, our presentations are primarily video based. Uh, and in fact, they need to be put on the web for review. But are there any questions uh, about anything that I presented this afternoon? Did anyone, did I hit anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does, um, do you do a lot with Macintosh? Macintosh? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I use Macintosh primarily for graphic work as far as just 2D still images. Uh, my assumption mm -hmm. was that we were talking about interactive. We are, um, but I was just curious because they have a, a program called Keynote, and I don't know if you were familiar with that. Yeah, Keynote is the equivalent of a PowerPoint. PowerPoint, yeah. okay, I didn't know if it was, you know, the same kind of process. Or... Yeah, yeah, actually it is. Uh, you can add images, text, and all those fun things as well. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm the Rodzilla here. Oh, you're the Rodzilla. And electronics. <laughs> good. Well, good, good, good. They come to see me with 4.0s and leave with 3.9s. <laughs> as, as, as long as what they leave with. Hey, man, you forgot about me. Well, yeah. But you're later. I straight you very little down. As long as they leave with a sense of my life is better you know, because I went here. He had one today came to me. He had a B last quarter. He had everything else was A's all the way through. He won't make the dean list. I said, "Did you learn something?" He said, "Yes." And he didn't expect to make a B. He expected to do worse than that. Okay. So he was happy with the B. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's funny you mention that because uh, it was the oddest thing. But one of the classes or the groups, in fact, before my group that actually went to Professor Rodriguez, he literally came out of the class, running down the hall, saying, I made a D! I made a D! <laughs> because the rest of the class <laughs> failed. <laughs> but, I mean, he was, he was excited about his D. Um, Even, even those of us, myself included, who failed Professor Rodriguez's class the first time, uh, we learned just how important it was for us you know, to really to think differently. He oftentimes gave word problems, and they were three problems. And problem number one had three parts. And of those three parts, he took, he took two of those answers and plugged it into problem number two. Mm -hmm. And then took one of those answers and put it in problem number three. So if you messed up on the first one, it was a snowball effect. Yep. But his whole point was that in the real world, it's not going to be laid out for you. You're going to have to assess the situation, pick out information, and, <coughs> and then apply for what you learned to that information. So he always taught, I mean, we always had word problems. And, and because of him, our... Uh, Problem solving fact capabilities, I mean, really were put to the test. But after we finished, <laughs> we knew how to approach a problem. And actually, even as I mentioned during the commencement ceremony, I didn't go to school for 3D animation. I went to school for electronic engineering. But because of the passion of the teachers that taught me, I left school with problem solving skills. I left school knowing how to teach myself. And that's how I learned to use the software package that I currently use today. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yes. You know, talking about uh, Keynote as part of PowerPoint, what are the kinds of things you can do with Keynote, like in a presentation? Well, uh, of course, you can add text, video. Uh, in fact, you can also add uh, graphics. One of the things about Keynote is that, that you can highlight certain areas uh, you know, to draw emphasis to. Uh, and that is really important, especially when you have information that is critical, you know, to the subject matter. Anybody else? We actually have 3D Max on our machine. Oh, cool. So you use that for animation or just... See, doesn't DT have force in 3D Max? 
started using it when it was just 3D Studio back in the early 90s there. Any other questions, comments, criticisms? I'll take them all. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, uh, turn it back over to you, Bill. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the green and I introduce you to my boss.